What's up, everyone? I'm Derek Smith, right here in the heart of Mediaverse Studios, and this is Tinseltown Tragedies, where we talk about the horrors of Hollywood, from cursed sets to strange deaths and everything in between. So if you got a minute, sit down with me, relax, and let's talk tragedy. You have now entered Tinseltown. On this episode of Tinseltown Tragedies, we're going to the three most dangerous film sets in film history, and I'll bet you haven't heard of any of them. Starting off with number three, 1981's Roar. I gotta go help your uncles, they're killing each other! Starring Noel Marshall, who also directed the film, Noel plays Hank, a naturalist living in Tanzania, Africa on a nature reserve. After a committee arrives on the preserve to review Hank's grant, the big cats start to get a little angry. And by the time Hank's family arrives, things start to get dangerous. Originally reported, 48 people were hurt on this film, but later on, it was determined to be over 70. There was one, there was one lion that I got 56 stitches in the head and it took six guys 25 minutes to get the lion off of me. And that happened very early on in the filming. And that lion continually tried to bite me. Starring alongside Noel Marshall was his wife, Tippi Hedren, who during filming was actually mauled by a lion who drug his teeth across her skull and she required stitches. And later during filming, Tippi actually fell off an elephant and broke her ankle. She contracted gangrene. But her co-star Melanie Griffith actually received the worst of the injuries. She was actually mauled by a lioness who tore open her face. Melanie! Rumor has it a group of lions donated to the film actually belonged to Satanists. Rumor even has it that one of the lions belonged to Anton LaVey himself, founder and high priest of the Church of Satan. Number two on the list is 1956's The Conqueror, starring John Wayne. You return empty-handed from the chase, my son? That's all, fine gazelle. Now, you know John Wayne for being the rough, tough cowboy that he always plays, but in this movie, he actually played a Mongolian warlord who kidnaps a Tartar king's daughter in order to take over his empire. But the fierce battles pale in comparison to the love he eventually gains for his captor. Even with John Wayne starring in the film, it really didn't help the movie at all. 1978, they actually named it one of the top 50 worst movies ever made. And 1980, John Wayne was posthumously awarded a Golden Turkey Award for Worst Acting. It also gained another award for Worst Casting in Film History, which I'm sure has been beaten by then. But that's only the beginning of the troubles for this movie. Upon the beginning of filming, the cast and crew was almost wiped out by a flash flood. But still, that's nothing. They actually filmed this movie downwind from a nuclear testing site owned by the US government. Now of course the government likes to pull your leg and say everything's okay, but in this case, it wasn't okay. Out of the 220 cast members that were on set for this movie, 91 actually developed cancer because of the testing site. 46 actually died. And I know 46 people dying of cancer due to nuclear testing sounds bad, but that still holds nothing to our number one. The Viking, 1931. What are you doing in here all alone? On our last night together? Since I walked the fishing head this morning, your feet's no excuse to lay down either. Your feet's all right. Then so why don't you come dance with me? The Viking is a film about a young man who believes himself to be the town jinx who falls in love with a local girl. What are you two doing together in here? We're just talking. You were just telling me. He's going to St. John's tomorrow. Him going to St. John's? For what? Why, to get a bed, of course. To prove that he's not a jinx, she convinces him to go on a seal hunting expedition. Unfortunately, the man on the seal hunting team is also in love with that young woman. Where's Luke? He's all right, Skipper Jed. Don't you worry about him. This makes twice you've saved Luke Orem's life, Skipper Jed. Are you wrong, my son? This time, it was Luke that saved my life. Paramount was so confident about this movie, they actually advanced $100,000 to have the movie made, which equates to about 2019000 these days. After principal photography had wrapped, George Melford and Varric Frissel decided to go out and get stock footage. 
They brought along cases of dynamite to help break through the thick ice to help the ships get along. Unfortunately, one of the crew members mishandled the dynamite, causing it to explode and killing 27 people, making it the deadliest movie in film history. And once again, that just proves that bright lights don't always equal a bright future in Hollywood. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Tinseltown Tragedies. And if you haven't yet, don't forget, like, follow, subscribe, Mediaverse Studios to see what we got coming out next. Always something new, always something to enjoy. Due to popular requests, we're actually doing a Tinseltown podcast where you can tune in. We're going to go over all these movies all over again in greater detail, and we're throwing in two extra movies for you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Derek Smith, and I can't wait to see you next time so we can talk more tragedy.